We're reading chapter 21 of Carlota. The soldier grew stronger. <laughs> Sorry. The soldier grew stronger. He left his bed and went into the courtyard to sit in the sun and watch Rosario feed the big eagle. I could not keep him from leaving his room, but I was fearful that any father, that my father would hear him there or see him. Do you feel well enough to get on a horse? I asked him on that morning as he watched Rosario toss a mouse to Vuelo Grande. You want to get rid of me, the gringo said. My father may wish to use the patio also, I asked. I said. He likes the sun and he often feeds the eagle. We can do neither while you are, he can do neither while you are here. Why? I'm not in his way. We can sit in the sun together and talk. We can talk about the battle as old veterans should. The young soldier was in a good mood, as if he were at home, as if he were at home at Dos Hermanos. <laughs> Don Saturnino is better, as I have told you, but he needs to walk and enjoy the sun. He does not know that you are here. He does not like gringos or gringo soldiers, and you are both. You speak out, the young man said. I have a sister like you. Whatever she thinks, she says, no matter what. Can you go tomorrow, I said. If you're not able to ride a horse by then, we will have a cart and a pair of oxen for you. I can go, the soldier said. He did not seem angry, but I would not have blamed him if he had been. Vuelo Grande, full of mice and gophers, was dozing with his eyes half closed. He was a handsome bird. His black banded tail, of which he was very proud and which he spent much of his time combing with his yellow beak, shone in the sun. I like that bird, Senor Fleming said. He wouldn't be for sale, would he? I'd like to take him along to show my friends. I can tell them that he was sitting on a branch and I last sued him. The soldier reached out and gave the banded tail a friendly twist. More from rage than from injury, the eagle flapped his wings and let out one of his loudest screams. The eagle belongs to my father, I said, and he's not likely to sell him. I'll ask, won't do any harm, the soldier said. He's standing over there now. The soldier raised his hand in greeting. Hola, senor, he called out. My father did not answer. He came slowly across the courtyard. He looked pale. I was asking about your eagle, the soldier said. Your daughter says you don't want to sell it. I doubt that my father heard the soldier. He did not look at him. He looked at me for a long time. He was trying to control the wrathful words crowding into his throat. I have learned this morning from one of our vaqueros that you brought a gringo to Dos Hermanos, he said at last. I did not believe this, but now I see that it is true. I'll explain, the soldier said. My father did not answer him. He acted as if the gringo were not there, standing not two steps away. He leaves at once, Don Saturnino, I said. I have given orders for a cart to take him away to any place he wishes to go. The soldier said, I can tell you why I'm here. I know why you are here, my father said, still not looking at the soldier. To me, he said, I will talk to you later about this. He was angry, close to silence. He was thinking of Carlos. Our eyes met. Always before I had done what my father wished, and I was always a loving and obedient daughter. What he wished me to do, I had done, without so much as thinking about it. But as we stood there with him, trying to stood there with him trying to stare me down. I remembered suddenly the moment in the meadow when I had used the lance and there was no other thought in my mind than to thrust it through the soldier's heart. I was ashamed now of what I had tried to do. The shame gave me courage. It is important to speak, I thought. Then I said, this man has been wounded. I wounded him myself. The surgeon told me not to move him for a week and the week has not passed. My father winced at these words. It would be better had I died at San Pasquale, he said quietly. But as though he spoke the very truth. Far better. His face was white. He took a step toward the soldier and stopped as if in pain. Thinking to help him, I put a hand on his arm, but he pulled it away. He parted his lips and wet them with his tongue. He tried to speak to me, to the soldier, to someone. Looking at the sky, he slowly sank to his knees. The soldier caught him and laid him in the sun on the beaten earth of the courtyard. 
My father breathed for a while, deep breaths, as if he wanted to take in the whole world. I went to call my grandmother. When we returned, my father was breathing in great gasps. I called the Indians, and we took him to his bed. He did not speak again. Later that night, as we sat beside him, Don Saturnino de Zubaran turned his face toward us, and looking at us from far away, died. That was not what I was thinking was coming. <laughs> <laughs>